Hey guys, Sean here with another edition of Open Analysis Live. What we're going to do this week is uh, is a bit different. Um, where I'm going to walk through one of the tools we've released called uh, Blob Runner, uh, which allows you to uh, quickly debug uh, 32 and 64-bit shellcode. So, so any file that you pass as the main parameter, um, and then pause before it it jumps into the the allocated memory region. So it allows you to um, load a Blob Runner up in a in a debugger um, and then step into the the shell code to actually debug it. We also have some pre-built uh, releases uh, under releases if you don't want to build it, but uh, obviously it's it's entirely open source, so you can. Uh, just go to the Git repo, uh, you know, download and build the code. Uh, we're open to you know any and all pull requests. Uh, so uh, so if you have ideas, uh, you know that'll help improve this. Um, definitely reach out. Uh, you know we're always open to to that. Um, so the one the one I guess difference between uh, 32 and 64 bit code uh, is that um, the Microsoft compiler, the 64 bit compiler won't support inline assembly. So for x86 shellcode, what Blob Runner does is it uh, it will allocate a memory region and then it'll just jump to the base of that or to whatever offset uh, you pass in. Um, so 64-bit code is a bit different and what we do with 64-bit uh, shellcode is that we, we create a paused thread um, and then once you've set a breakpoint, you can resume the thread and it will, it will hit your breakpoint uh, in the debugger and you can start stepping uh, through the code. The end result is the same. Uh, you're able to debug both 64-bit and 32-bit 32 uh, 32 shellcode. Now um, along with uh, you know debugging also if you're if you're an offensive person this is also a, a super quick way to um, I guess test <laughs> test your generated payloads or what have you. So uh, for instance if we just run uh, blob runner uh, and we'll do sample one dot bin uh, we can see it immediately pauses and it tells us the uh, memory offset uh, that it's been uh, that it's been written to um, and then basically you know it, it's up to us to resume execution so with this one if we just hit enter we can see that calc dot exe uh, pops up so we know that this uh, this sample um, ex executes a program uh, essentially um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have another sample that uh, we're going to use as an example to uh, actually debug um, using Blob Runner um, and figure out uh, what this thing's trying to do. Now, I am aware that uh, we have uh, x64 <laughs> debug on this system, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use Zyda. Um, <laughs> leave a comment below. Um, so uh, we'll just load up the file um, now because I have a blob runner in the shell code on a external system um, I have to set up uh, remote debugging um, and we just need to add the uh, shell code file name as the parameter which is uh, sample2.bin and the only requirement is that uh, your shellcode file exists wherever you're running the um, the remote debugging uh, exe, or you'd you would have to give um, an absolute or relative path to it on the on the remote system. Um, so now that we've done that, uh, we should be able to debug debug it. Yes. Okay. So. Now we're debugging um, Blob Runner, and if we switch back, we can see that uh, uh, the base of memory is at uh, 0003, uh, 0000. So if we go back uh, into IDA, um, if we go back into IDA and, uh, and take a look at the segments, um, we can see it here. And let's convert it to code, and then um, and then set a breakpoint. So because we didn't pass um, 
uh, an offset to it. What it's uh, what Blob Runner is going to do is jump to the base of the uh, of the region that we've allocated to uh, write uh, the shellcode into. Now, just uh, scrolling down this a bit, we can see um, uh, there's a bunch of uh, uh, moves uh, and fix-ups uh, for memory. And then at the bottom we have this jump EAX. Uh, so we know that that's, uh, that's probably going to be pretty interesting. Um, and then scrolling back up, uh, we can see a call. Let's convert this to code. Oh, we have another one, call EBP. Uh, another one here. So, now we've you know we've loaded the shell code um, we've set a few breakpoints in places that look interesting um, um, because I generated this I know it's not it's not heavily obfuscated in any way but um, <coughs> uh, if you're dealing with an unknown sample you definitely want to make sure you're using uh, a VM um, and take a snapshot before you start doing this just in case it gets away from you it's the same as as any malware sample. Um, so then if we go back here and hit enter uh, within our console window, uh, we can see that it, that it hits our first breakpoint as expected. So let's step down and let's step into this call. Let's see what EBP is. Let's just call it back. Okay. here okay. okay so if we look over at what EAX is we can see that this is calling um, win exec uh, from kernel 32 so just make a quick comment win exec and now if we look up um, what parameters it supports, um, <clears throat> the first parameter is a string. Uh, that's the command line it's going to execute. And uh, the second parameter is uh, an integer that uh, will control the, uh, the command window display. So. We know right away that what we're interested in is uh, is this is this parameter here, uh, ECX. So if we take a look, it's ECX three zero zero nine nine. So let's go. Let's go there. And we can see that uh, we have a PowerShell command here. So, um, like our first example, this one uh, is calling some PowerShell uh, that includes uh, an encoded command. Um, and at this point, what we would do is uh, we could copy this out um, and then decode the um, the encoded command and uh, and figure out what that next stage is going to be. Um, this is pretty common if you're if you're dealing with uh, with document exploits. There'll often be sort of a, a secondary stage to download the payload, um, and then also uh, if you're dealing with any sort of fileless uh, malware where <clears throat> it may use PowerShell to actually uh, execute um, some shellcode. What we're gonna do is make um, uh, the two sample files uh, available and there'll be links uh, below so you can debug them. Uh, feel free to download Blob Runner and use it. Uh, if you have any ideas to make it better, let us know. Uh, we're definitely open to pull requests. Uh, if you have any questions about debugging shellcode, if you have a sample uh, that's not uh, behaving nicely, uh, definitely reach out to Sergey and myself uh, over Twitter uh, or leave a comment. If you want to see um, 
any videos uh, or tutorials, definitely let us know uh, in the comments below and we'll uh, try to get to them as soon as we can. Um, remember, like and subscribe if you like the video. Uh, if you want to help improve any of our tools, uh, definitely reach out, uh, fork them in GitHub. Uh, we're always open to uh, pull requests. Until next time, uh, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware and stay curious.